Hello everybody, it's me Angela Martin and welcome to another quick cast. Now in this episode we'll be looking at the new features of Safari within the iPad OS 17. Now in this version of Safari, Apple has introduced quite a number of new features within the Safari browser. So with that said guys, let's not waste any more time and let's get started. So let's go into our Safari browser. Now, like my Safari browser on my Mac, I like to keep my sidebar open to give me quick access to different locations, whether they are my different bookmarks, to my shared tab groups, or even websites that have been shared with me, or even websites that I've accessed through my other devices under my iCloud tabs, which is my devices under the same iCloud account. Now, I'm just going to quickly go into my bookmarks. One of the new features is the fact that we can show the icons in the bookmark bar. As you can see, my bookmark bar is hidden and I can access my favorites through the sidebar by just going to favorites and there you can see there are my different icons here, which is the little book for the ones that are not in my folders and in my folders, of course, are all my other bookmarks as well. Now, if for those who do not know about creating folders inside of your favorite bookmarks. You can just go, if your sidebar's open, tap on edit, new folder. I'm just gonna call this new folder personal. And in my personal folder, I can then just go and tap on the URL when I'm in the website and say, add bookmark. And then I can select the folder over here. So it, instead of clogging it up, you can keep everything nice organized within that folder and save. So if I go to that folder, you'll see there's that website. Of course, I could have renamed it as well. And even if I save it, tap hold, I can always go to edit and rename it there. So I'll just make it a shorter version, just for a DigiK. And there we go. As I mentioned, you can also show your bookmark bar by just going into your settings. In your settings, under Safari setting, you can go to show favorite bar as well as show icons on favorite bar now that's a new feature that's been introduced within ipad os 17. so now if i should go back to my safari you would notice that here at the top there is my favorite bookmark bar and you will see the personal folder i just made appears there rumble and so on so i can have quick access in my bar and know which ones are folders and which ones are just plain bookmarks so another feature that I didn't cover as yet on the Safari and the iPad OS is the group tabs. Now group tabs makes it super easy to be able to actually keep separate group of tabs. In other words, yeah, you can see I've got quite a few groups going on. If I go into my work group tab, you will see it shows me all the tabs saved under my work group. And I also made a group called fun that's separate from the others. So these are all my hobbies and stuff that I check out and so on. And then there's a coding one as well. Now to create the group tab, if I'm on my sidebar, just tap on the plus. In fact, I'm going to go into my one tab, my standard one, tap on the plus. And when you're in standard one, it will actually ask you, it will add another one, new tab group with one tab, I'll choose that one. And I'll name this group tab, DigiK, and I'll save it. So there I've got my first tab in that DigiCode group and click on the plus to add another tab. And this time I'm gonna go again to apple.com and let me add an additional tab. And in this tab, I will go to our YouTube channel. Now there's another awesome feature that I wanna show you guys and that is advanced search methods. Say for instance, I wanna search for a product at a store, let me use Digicape and I want to search for the iPads. Instead of typing in Digicape, finding the store and in the store, I search for the iPads. From my URL, I can actually just type in Digicape space iPads. If I search for it, not only does it give me the results that will take me straight to the iPads, but also it shows it to me in the search engine, the different prices, and you can see it's all DigiCap, DigiCap, and so on. So it's a pretty awesome feature, but now let's not move away from our purpose. 
is to go into our iPad page. So there you can see I've got my three tabs under my group tab. Now, one awesome feature that's been included with iPadOS 17 is that we can set up different profiles. Now, profiles are different versions of a Safari browser, but within the same Safari app. So if we go to our settings once again, and in our settings, right at the bottom, you will see these new profiles. And I want to set up a new one, and I will call this one Digicap and I'll give it the company color blue and I will give it a glove and then I'll just tap on the done button. The profile that was your default profile always comes as personal. So now if I should go back into my Safari browser, now see at the bottom of my sidebar is profile and here I'm in my personal profile and I can switch over to my digital profile. But let me start off with my personal profile and show you guys how this is different from making different group tabs. So in my personal profile, what I'll do is I will log into my iCloud account. But I'll let me sign in actually. So I'll just use my touch ID. So now I'm signed in. Now let me switch back to my DigiK profile and I'll go into my iCloud as well. Now you would notice, once I go into my iCloud, it asks me to sign in here as well. So it's a totally separate version of what I had before. And if I should go into my personal profile, you would notice that all of my tab groups are there, even the new one that I made. Whereas if I should go to my DigiK profile, you will see that those tab groups are not there anymore. Now, another thing about the profiles is that we can also assign it to a focus mode. So if I should go into my settings, and in my settings, I go to my focus setting, and I can apply to any of my focus modes, which is available within my control center as well. Now, yeah, I'll just add it to my personal focus. And in my personal focus, if I scroll down to the bottom to my filter side, I can tap on add filter, tap on the Safari filter, and here you can see I can set the filter tab to my profiles or to my tab groups. I'm going to keep it on my profiles and I'm going to go to choose under my profile. I'm going to make this my DigiK profile or seeing it's personal, let me keep it under my personal profile. And now if I should tap on add, you can see that filter has been added. Now if I should go to my Safari browser, it's under DigiK, but I change my focus mode to personal, then you will see that immediately it will say, uh, do you want to switch to personal because my personal profile is to my focus mode. So I say, okay, it will switch now to my personal focus. Now, one tab that has been available on both profiles is my private browsing. Now, when it comes to private browsing, you can easily see that my URL becomes black, different from my standard browsing. The private browsing, of course, is if you want to not save any of your browsing history data, then you can just do everything under your private browsing. Now, additional security layer that you now get with iPadOS 17 is that you can use your touch ID. So if your iPad go to sleep, but then to access your private browsing again, you need to use your touch ID now to set that up. I'm going to go back into my settings, again to my Safari setting. And in my Safari setting, what I'll do is I will go to quiet touch ID to unlock private browsing. I'll switch that on. If I should go to my Safari again, you will see immediately it will go into using my touch ID to unlock it. So I'll tap on unlock. It's my touch ID. Now I'm on it again. But in addition to that, with my private browsing, I can even use a different search engine. So if I should go back into my settings, scroll right to the top and you will see there they've got search engine Google and my private search engine at the moment is set to default. 
So it will still use the Google one at this point in time. So what I'll do is I will change my search engine. Let me go with the DuckDuckGo. So now that I've added that one, and if I go back to my browser, use my touch ID, and we're gonna start with my personal. So again, I will do the, let me go with a DigiGate space. Let me go with a MacBook Pro search. And there you can see that it gives me the results over there. But on my private browsing, I'll do this exactly the same thing. I'll just copy and paste this. Copy. I'll go into my private browsing. Paste and go. And there you can see it gives me also a search result, but under my DuckDuckGo. Now a new additional security feature is that we can also turn on our advanced tracking and fingerprint protection. By default, it's also it was set on private browsing only on my Mac as well, but I turn it on for all browsing. So that just adds that additional layer of security as well. So another awesome feature that is part of our Safari on iPad OS 17 is the listen to page option and it goes part and partial with the show reader as well. Now, if I should go to a web page where there's a lot of information, like say for instance, any Wikipedia page, and I'm gonna use the Nelson Mandela Wikipedia page. And here you can see that the reader view just popped up now. But if I should tap on the double A, you'll see that I can switch to reader view. But below that is also the listen to page. Now, if I should tap on the listen to page, it will immediately start reading it and extremely accurate. Nelson Mandela. P. For other uses, see Mandela disambiguation and Nelson Mandela disambiguation. So as you could pick up, it does a actually pretty good job about it. Very accurate. And you can even rewind it back or go back and even go forward if you need to. And even change the speaking rate as well. So a useful new feature introduced in Safari on iPad OS 17. So that's it for this episode, my magnificent people. So I hope you found this episode useful and you will surely catch me on the next one. And as always, stay safe out there, farewell and good fortune.